Alberta Premier Jason Kenney's future as the United Conservative Party leader will also be decided tonight. The results of his leadership review are going to be released in a few hours. This was all triggered after months of political unrest from the UCP MLAs and party members. Premier Kenny, who founded the party, is the creator of it, says he'll accept the results of the vote, but he says he only needs 50 plus one to survive. Remember, Ralph Klein got 55% of a vote and said, I'm resigning. Klein said back then, 75% is the threshold, not 50 plus one. So what's on the line and can he survive? And if he does survive, will he call a snap election? The press gallery's back. Tony McCharles from the Toronto Star is back. Carl Dockstader, the co-host of One Dish, One Mike, is back. And Stephen Carter is our special guest, the president of Decide Campaigns and the co-host of The Strategist podcast, which is excellent. Okay, Carter, welcome to the show. Uh, set the stage for people outside of Alberta. What's at stake for Kenny? Give us the fight. Well, I mean, you, you summed it up. It's his political future that's at stake. He will either be the, you know, be the person who can continue on as the premier in a couple of hours, or he will be, uh, his political career will be all but dead. So we're going to find out in a little bit, but I'll tell you, people are are very nervous. They don't know what's going to happen. This is, the, I think, the first time in UCP history mm. that we haven't had some sort of a leak on the important numbers prior to the numbers actually coming out. Let me just stay with you, Stephen. Even if, he says 50 plus one, that may, he may be able to survive, even if he gets 60 percent. Does the party split? It, Brian Jean, the former head of the Wild Rose Party, is back in part of a member of the UCP. He tried, you know, he fought for that leadership against Kenny. They are at odds. Like, is the, even if he wins, is it a Pyrrhic victory? No, I mean, I think winning with, with 55 percent, and that's what most people think he'll win with. There seems to be very few people choosing now the landslide victory, which we're kind of putting north of 60%. Uh, it looks like he'll get somewhere between 40 and 60. No one knows. And if he gets in the plus side of 50 to 60, then, you know, there's a bunch of questions. Does he keep the rebels in the caucus or does he ask them to leave? Does he call a snap election when he really has the opportunity to select his own candidates uh, and sign their papers, putting those rebels in a position where they don't have a bank account? They don't have the capacity to actually contest an election. These are the types of things that we're thinking. I think we're going to be, if, if he wins today, I think we're in a place where we could be seeing an election in Alberta in early June uh, because they've already been, they've, Elections Alberta has already been put on a footing to be ready. Uh, so this could happen very, very quickly. Uh, okay, Tonda, you're a longtime Kenny Watcher. He's a survivor. He's, he's talking <laughs> he about 55%. 1983, Joe Clark, I spoke to him last night. He got 66.9%. In 1983, he said, not enough. He lost it. How, can Jason Kenny survive, Tonda? Look, I think part of the uh, calculus here has to be, like, how many people actually do send in ballots on this mail-in ballot? I mean, I gather 60,000 were signed up to, to, to register that could have voted. If only 30,000 send in ballots and he only gets 50 plus one of that, that's nothing. He has, he has then got a massive problem on his hands. And so I think it's really fascinating, Stephen's raising the potential of a snap election, even if he gets a, a narrow margin of a victory. But look, I also think that if he fails to win there, I mean, where does his political career go? I think that he will have lost the stomach for it, frankly. And I'm surprised he hasn't already because this has been a fight from the get-go. I mean, you say he created the party. What he did was he stitched back together a party that fell apart. And so uh, even in the face of, you know, a rising NDP in that province, that has not been enough to galvanize the forces, the conservative forces in that province to stay united, to fight the next election. So I don't know where it goes for him, but it's a fascinating political story to watch. You're right. He is a political survivor par, par excellence. Yeah, he fights off the ropes. Uh, Carl, I mean, during a campaign uh, stop, he couldn't get the nozzle of a gas can out of his famous blue truck. I don't think it's fuel in the truck. It sounds like he's got flat tires right now. Can he survive this thing? I mean, even if he does survive, the United Conservative Party caucus is going to meet tomorrow and they're going to be some serious conversations. But but this, you know, this is a whole new era. I mean, if, if he survives this vote, who knows what tricks he has up his sleeve? You know, does he use the next 12 months to try and to try and whip together a coalition? There there are enough conservative voices voices in Alberta that don't want conservatives to splinter because that means the NDP will walk right back into a victory. So, so that's an important part of this calculus here. 
Okay, last thing, uh, Stephen Carter. Does he does he squeak by and then call cause a snap uh, call a snap election, purge the party, and try to win again? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, the history of squeaking by uh, has been really mixed in Alberta because you'll remember that both Ed Stelmack and Alison Redford got 78 percent in their leadership reviews, and they were gone by the next election. It wasn't enough, so, exactly. Yeah, so if, if he wants to actually stay, this is why I think that the SNAP election makes the only, is the only thing that makes sense. The election period is really the only time that, elect, that a leader has full control of their party. As soon as you're in government or you're in opposition, you lose that control. But those 28 days of an election period, you are the boss. And I could see that being something where he tries to reassert himself. Um, trying to go another year, I don't think it'll work. And Tonda, you, uh, you mentioned how many votes were cast. It's 32,000 out of 60 True. some okay, thousand. So, so it's, it's, there you it's go. just a smidge already, over half. <laughs> yeah, this is not going to be a landslide. Party. Yeah. Yeah. There's no one uh, who's going to be going back and saying, Jason, you, you got yourself mandate here. Um, he's still going right, to be in trouble. Yeah. And the chaos really begins, uh, tomorrow. Already we've got, Probably seven people lining up for the leadership that have started their work. Uh, and that's where things really start to undermine the existing leader. Okay.